Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers reasonable suspicion, suspect identifications, and commercial leases, and is brought to us by the Westerville Police Department. You can find a link to the original video in the description below. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Private Internet Access. Privacy is one of the many pillars of liberty, and being in control of your digital footprint is a vital element of modern privacy. Every year, digital privacy becomes increasingly more complex and impactful on our day-to-day -day lives. And securing your internet traffic and browsing data is essential to ensuring your privacy is respected. Private Internet Access is one of the foremost VPN providers on the market with over 30 million downloads from all over the world. They use world-class next-gen server infrastructure in over 75 countries, meaning you get a secure, reliable VPN connection anytime, anywhere. As it changes your IP address and reroutes your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel, Private Internet Access hides your online activity from your internet service provider, network administrator, and government sensors. And it's also the most customizable VPN on the market, allowing you to make your VPN experience truly your own. Private Internet Access is available for all platforms. And right now, members of the ATA community can use my link to get Private Internet Access for $2.08 per month for the next three years, with two months completely free. With a 30-day money-back guarantee and a customer support team that's available 24-7, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So click on the link in the description to take advantage of this exclusive offer now. Thanks again to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this episode. On July 10th, 2021, civil rights attorney Emmanuel Olawale was moving some bags of trash from his vehicle to a dumpster behind his rented office in Westerville, Ohio. Based on concerns of illegal dumping, which a statement from the Westerville Chief of Police suggests is a common reason for officer investigations, officers Dan Ruth and Matthew Ballman of the Westerville Division of Police pulled in behind Mr. Olawale, exited their vehicle, and approached him. Hi there. Hi, my office is here. Your office is here? Okay, which office is it? The Olawale Law Firm. The what? Here's my business card. Okay, sweet 160. Okay. If you need my All right. ID, I'll show you my ID. If you don't mind, just so, yeah, if you don't mind, can we see your ID? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, that is pretty cool. That's a slick uh, business card. Yep. All right. I'll give it to him. Um, you can keep doing what you're doing. We're just, again, we're kind of concerned, okay. yeah, yeah, seeing somebody dump a bunch of stuff there. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Have back? No, just don't run it. Oh. Don't, have to, don't, no, don't run my card. Don't run my ID. Huh? Don't run my ID. Don't run your ID? You have no reason to. Well, we're going to at least mark it down. We're going to take down your information? Nope. After providing his identification to the officers to confirm his identity as a tenant of the office building, Mr. Olawale tells the officers not to run his ID, but the officers argue that they are within their authority to record his information for their incident report. According to Section 2921.29 of the Ohio Revised Code, quote, no person who is in a public place shall refuse to disclose the person's name, address, or date of birth when requested by a law enforcement officer who reasonably suspects the person is committing, has committed, or is about to commit a criminal offense. It is likely that the officers had reasonable suspicion to initially detain Mr. Olawale on suspicions of illegal dumping, which is defined in Section 3767.32 of the Ohio Revised Code. The statute states that, quote, No person, without privilege to do so, shall knowingly deposit litter in a litter receptacle located on any private property not owned by the person, and explains that, quote, this section may be enforced by any sheriff, deputy sheriff, police officer of a municipal corporation, or any other law enforcement officer within the law enforcement officer's jurisdiction. However, even though the stop was likely initially justified, it is questionable whether the officers could constitutionally run a warrant check on Mr. Olawale after he provided them with his ID. In the 2015 case of Rodriguez v. United States, the Supreme Court held that because traffic stops are especially fraught with danger to police officers, an officer may need to take certain, quote, negligibly burdensome precautions, such as criminal record and outstanding warrant checks, in order to complete their mission safely. While the question of whether the officers had the authority to continue to detain Mr. Olawale after he provided evidence that he was a tenant is a gray area that we will discuss later in this episode, if a court concluded that the officers had reasonable suspicion to continue detaining him, they would likely also determine that the officers had the authority to run his ID as an officer safety precaution. I'm on my property, put in trash in my 
Okay, true. but this is wait. This is not just your property. It's several people's I property. I understand. Okay, but I'm not violating any law. So don't no one said ID. that you're violating. Violating? No, any no, law. no, no, no. Don't run my ID. I'm a lawyer. I know my rights. Okay. I'm not violating any law. I'm on my property. There's no suspicion. No one called anybody. So don't run my ID. I only identify myself so that this won't escalate. That's fine. But we can still mark down who we're out with, and so that's what we're going to do. No. Yes. You didn't stop me. This. Don't turn yes. this into. An issue. Sir, you are turning this into an issue. We're just simply marking down who we're out with. Yeah. So he's I'll just going to write it down on a piece of I'll paper. Just, just, yeah. It's just your name. Why? Because, sir, we are out with you because we were concerned that you were illegally dumping. But, but you, you already discovered. Do you want me to show you my office? I understand that you're here, but I don't know if this dumpster belongs to you or somebody else in the, in the it complex. It belongs to me. Despite the fact that Mr. Olawale offered the officers evidence to show that he was not committing a crime, the officers insist on writing down his name for their report. Supreme Court precedent makes it clear that if the information discovered during an officer's Terry stop investigation, including the evidence provided by the suspect, dispels their reasonable suspicion, they cannot continue to detain an individual. For example, in the 1984 case of Berkmer v. McCarty, the Supreme Court explained that police officers are within their authority to stop and identify citizens based on reasonable suspicion, but, quote, the detainee is not obliged to respond, and unless the detainee's answers provide the officer with probable cause to arrest him, he must then be released. Unfortunately, there is no bright-line rule for when reasonable suspicion is dispelled, and courts must make this determination on a case-by-case -case basis according to the totality of the circumstances. Although Mr. Olawale offered proof that he was a tenant in the building, as we will discuss later in this episode, he did not provide proof that he was privileged to use the dumpster, making it possible that a court could find that the officers were justified in continuing their investigation until they obtained evidence to dispel their suspicions. However, if a court concluded that Mr. Olawale had sufficiently dispelled the officer's suspicions, the continuing encounter would become consensual, and the officers would have no authority to detain Mr. Olawale to run a warrant check. As detailed in a law enforcement bulletin issued by the Ohio Attorney General, if an officer takes the ID and goes to the cruiser to run warrant checks, they can convert a consensual encounter into an unlawful detention, since a reasonable person would believe they were no longer free to leave while the officer has their ID. However, as the bulletin goes on to explain, if an individual consensually provides their ID, the officer can write down information from the ID, such as the name, without triggering the Fourth Amendment. Therefore, it is likely a court would find that the officers could constitutionally document Mr. Olawale's name after he provided his identification, whether or not he was being detained. To you and you alone? Yes! Can you prove that that dumpster belongs to you and you alone? This dumpster belongs to the property. Okay, and that's my... And my stuff in there. That's my point, though, is that if it's also other units... So what? We belongs to everybody. We're paying okay. for it. It doesn't really matter if it belongs to all the unit. That's fine. Just give me back my ID. Thank there. you. The officer suggests that the only dumpster area that is on a private lot shared by several different businesses may only be accessible to some tenants, and implies that Mr. Olawale may not have access to the dumpster despite renting space on the property. While this seems like an unlikely scenario, it is technically a legal possibility under Ohio's commercial landlord-tenant laws. According to the Westerville zoning map, Mr. Olawale's office is located in a mixed-use quote-unquote planned development, or PD, zone. Section 1162.04 of the Codified Westerville Ordinances provides that on properties in PD zones, quote, Trash and litter shall be controlled and stored in container systems which are located and enclosed in a manner to screen them from view on all sides. However, Ohio law does not place a legal obligation on commercial landlords to provide their tenants with access to a dumpster or other trash container system, as commercial tenants in Ohio have very few rights outside of those established in the lease. Under Section 5321.04 of the Ohio Revised Code, landlords are legally required to meet certain minimum standards, such as providing trash receptacles and trash removal if four or more units are owned in the same building, which cannot be waived in the lease. On the other hand, commercial tenants generally have no rights other than what is established in the lease agreement, and landlords and tenants can freely negotiate whatever terms they would like as long as they are not illegal or contrary to public policy. In fact, one type of commercial lease, known as a true triple net lease, requires tenants to take responsibility for all of the property's expenses, including utilities, real estate taxes, building insurance, and maintenance. Given the vast discretion given to commercial landlords and tenants in negotiating lease terms, in this situation, it would be feasible for Mr. Olawale to rent an office but not have access to the dumpster. However, it is also possible that this line of questioning was merely a distraction tactic to keep Mr. Olawale busy while the other officer wrote down his information. Hi. 
Don't worry, everything is under control. And that's my wife. Okay. okay. That's now, fine. Do you want your you card came, back? Yeah, I understand you came to check, but trying to run my ID to find anything, no, that's illegal. That is not illegal. But okay, you can finish stumping if you like. Thank you. Just turn around and get out of here, and then we'll look him up. After returning Mr. Olawale's ID, the officers allowed him to leave and drove away. The following day, Mr. Olawale posted about the situation on social media, alleging that racial bias played a role in the encounter. In response to the posts, Westerville Police Chief Charles Chandler requested that an investigation be initiated, and the division published a webpage that included a statement from Chief Chandler and body cam footage from both officers. In his statement, Chief Chandler concluded that, quote, The body-worn camera shows a professional and polite encounter between our officers and Mr. Olawale, and that the officer's behavior was, quote, completely in line with the expectations of WPD officers. In a later interview, Mr. Olawale stated that he would file an official complaint if he thought it would make a difference, but since he believed the WPD statement was quote-unquote tone-deaf and that filing a complaint wouldn't make any difference, he did not plan to do so. Overall, the Westerville officers get a B-, minus because although much of their conduct was ethically questionable, they remained within the bounds of their authority throughout the interaction and initiated the stop based on a legitimate, reasonable suspicion. Departmental policy is a necessary element of any law enforcement organization, and there are many reasons why a department might require their officers to document the citizens that they make contact with. However, policies like these often clash with the Fourth Amendment and leave citizens feeling as though their privacy was violated even though they committed no crimes. It is difficult to rationalize the notion that identifying citizens who committed no crimes for the sake of departmental policy is a fair representation of protecting and serving the community, and this mentality will likely produce many more constitutional conundrums if left unchecked. There is a strong argument to be made that the officers were within their authority to continue investigating Mr. Olawale until they determined whether or not he had access to the dumpster in question. However, there is an equally compelling argument to be made that Mr. Olawale had provided enough evidence to dispel any suspicions the officers may have had, and it would certainly be interesting to see how a court would rule on this encounter. Ultimately, the Westerville officers allowed Mr. Olawale to go free without pressing the issue any further, but not before sacrificing Mr. Olawale's sense of privacy to ensure that their stop was properly documented. Mr. Olawale gets an A-. minus. Because although he willfully surrendered his ID to the officers, he remained relatively calm and collected throughout the encounter, actively worked to dispel the officers' suspicions, and respectfully challenged the conduct of the officers. When Mr. Olawale showed his ID to the officers, it appeared as though he only meant to present his ID, not surrender it into their possession. And the officers' refusal to give his ID back betrayed the forthcoming and compliant demeanor that Mr. Olawale was initially attempting to convey. Despite this, Mr. Olawale managed to compose himself and challenge the officer's conduct while maintaining a stern but level-headed attitude. I commend Mr. Olawale for remaining calm and compliant as he challenged the officers, but I also believe that his initial unreserved compliance is what prompted the officers to continue investigating. Offering officers more information than what they're asking for is almost never a good idea, and surrendering just enough detail to dispel an officer's suspicion without revealing sensitive information is an extremely difficult and circumstantial task. By no means is there a situation where refusing to obey lawful orders or physically resisting arrest would be considered legal. But this interaction is a great example of how being overly compliant can sometimes work against you. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.